Hey, what's up guys? Hard Leg Joe here with Water Deck Profile for the Super Heavy Samurai Synchro Deck. I'm just gonna go through everything in here, and I'll explain how it works. So our deck is entirely monsters. We're playing three Gamma Seal, the Sea Turtle Kaiju, one Max C, and then everything else is a Super Heavy Samurai that we play at three. We've got Thief, Big Ben K, Big Waraji, Soul Piercer, Magnet, Scales, Flutist, Trumpeter, Battle Ball, Soul Buster Gauntlet, Soul Horns, and Soul Peacemaker. The extra deck is mostly Super Heavy Samurai. We're playing two of the Warlord Susanoa, one Beast QB, two Ninja Saratobi, one Stealth Ninja, and one Ogre Shootin' Doji. The rest is sort of a toolbox. We've got Black Rose Moonlight Dragon, Black Rose Dragon, Coral Dragon, Miss Bird Clausalus, Utopia the Lightning, Regular Utopia, Castell, and Slacker Magician. The side deck I'll go over in a moment. So this deck is a beatdown deck. It's all about swarming the, the field with high attack point monsters, or I guess in this case high defense point monsters. If you're unfamiliar with the Super Heavy Samurai, all the synchros have the same effect that this card can attack while in face-up defense position, and when it does, apply its defense for damage calculation. And they have a lot of defense. The weakest one we play has 2,500. Our, our big boss monster, Susanoo, has 3,800. And even in the main deck, we have Big Ben Kai with 3,500. So in addition to just having that high attack, a lot of the Super Heavy Samurai also have equip effects. Uh, Soul Piercer, you can equip from your hand or side of the field to a Super Heavy Samurai, and that monster will do piercing damage, so you can get rid of your defense position monsters. Soul Horns, meanwhile, you can equip from your hand or side of the field, and the monster it's equipped to can attack twice. And Soul Buster Gauntlet will give that monster 400 defense, a nice little boost. More importantly, though, you can also discard it from your hand when a Super Heavy Samurai attacks, until the end of the turn, double its defense. This, combined with the Soul Horns, can give you a 7,000 attack point monster that's going to be able to attack your opponent twice, possibly do piercing damage, which in combination with your other monsters should be able to get you a pretty good OTK. Even more so if you're using your Synchro monsters like Susano with its 3,800. Now as for how to summon these Synchros, most of the time you're just wanting to make Susanoa. You can summon that using Big Ben K and either of your level 2 tuners, either the Trumpeter or the Battle Ball. Getting Ben K out here can be a little tricky since it's 8 stars, it doesn't really have any special summoning effects on its own, but you've got quite a few Super Heavy Samurai that'll help you out with that. Big Wurarji, you can special summon this card from your hand if you have no spell trap cards in your graveyard, but you can only summon Super Heavy Samurai monsters for the rest of the turn, and it can be treated as two tributes for a machine-type monster, which all the Super Heavy Samurais are. That means you can special summon this, normal summon Big Ben K, in addition to being able to attack in defense mode and making so all your other Super Heavy Samurai can attack in defense mode, it has the effect that when it's normal or special summoned, you can change its battle position. So even if you normal summon it off of Wurarji, you can move it into defense and continue your plays from there. Your other main way is Flutist. You can tribute this card to special summon one Super Heavy Samurai from your hand, so if you've got Flutist and then Big Ben K in hand, you can do that. Uh, Flutist also has an effect in the graveyard that if one of your Super Heavy Samurai would be targeted by an effect, you can banish this from the graveyard to negate and destroy that effect. So pretty good if you can get that combo off, or even if you can just send this to the graveyard somehow, usually pretty good there. And then finally, Soul Peacemaker, probably the newest card on here. You can equip this to any Super Heavy Samurai, either from your hand or your side of the field. While it's equipped, your opponent can only attack the monster that's equipped with this, which isn't too important on itself. More importantly, you can tribute the monster equipped with this in order to special summon a Super Heavy Samurai from your deck, which gives you access to Big Ben Kai, obviously, as well as all the other Super Heavy Samurais if you need them. Once you've got him out, all you need is your tuner. Uh, Trumpeter is pretty simple because if you have no spell traps in your graveyard, you could special summon this from your hand, although afterwards you can only make Super Heavy Samurais. Not really important since we're just making this, but if you're thinking of using this in something else, in addition, if this is Tribute Summon for a Super Heavy Samurai, you can summon it again. Again, not very important, but it could come up from time to time if you've got some other way to special summon things. Your other tuner, Battle Ball, doesn't really have a special summon effect of its own. You're going to have to normal summon it and hopefully special summon this without using your normal summon, which is pretty easy. If you could special summon a Wargy or a Trumpeter and then use Soul Piece on it, you can get this out without even wasting your normal summon. Uh, the more important effect with Battle Ball is if all the monsters you currently control are Super Heavy Samurais and you have no spell traps in the graveyard, you could target a face-up monster your opponent controls that has a level, send both it and this card to the graveyard, and special summon from your extra deck a Super Heavy Samurai Synchro with levels equal to it. Uh, but you can only use this once per turn. Basically, this guy lets you Synchro Summon using your opponent's monsters which is really powerful in its own right and the reason why we're playing so many variety of Super Heavy Samurai monsters. Normally we're not going to be able to make a level 7 or a level 8 all that easily on our own turn, 
But if your opponent has a level 5 or a level 6 monster, you can use it with Battle Ball in order to make whatever. More importantly, that's why we're playing the one Kaiju. Because it's level 8, you can use it and Battle Ball to make your Susanoa. Tribute this over your opponent's monster, whatever they have. And then suddenly you've got a monster on the side of the field that you can use for Battle Ball. Everything else in here is either just additional support or the ability to swarm. Uh, Super Heavy Samurai Thief is kind of neat. It's your Spell Trap Destruction. If you have no Spell Trap cards in your graveyard, you could Special Summon it. After it was Special Summoned this way, you can only summon Super Heavy Samurais, which means you can't use your Kaiju the same turn you use this. Make sure you remember that. You can tribute this card to either destroy one spell trap in your opponent's zone and then set that card to your side of the field, or destroy a card in their pendulum zone and then activate it in your pendulum zone. In either case, not only is this getting rid of things like Solemn Strike so you can clear it out before you, you make your Synchro plays, but you're going to be able to add the cards you destroy to your side of the field and use them. Uh, as you probably noticed, a lot of the Super Heavy Samurai say you can't have Spell Traps in your graveyard, which is why we don't play any. But if you use your opponent's Spell Traps, they'll go back to their graveyard after you use them, so you don't have to worry about this ruining your synergy. Uh, Soul Piercer, I already mentioned this one, but it's a piercing effect, but it has an additional effect. If it's sent from the field to the graveyard, you can add one Super Heavy Samurai monster from your deck to your hand. So this is your search card, and getting the search off is actually not really that difficult since you can equip this to whatever. You can, for instance, special summon this, equip it with Soul Peacemaker and Soul Piercer, and then when you use this effect to summon out your Big Ben Kai, this will go to the graveyard since the monster has been tributed, and you'll get the effect. Uh, likewise, you can use it with these two. Samurai Magnet, when it's normal summoned, you can special summon a level 4 or lower Super Heavy Samurai from your hand, and then change this to Defense Position. Samurai Scales, meanwhile, says if your opponent controls two or more monsters and you control none, you can special summon it. And if it's normal or special summoned, you could target one level 4 or lower Super Heavy Samurai in your graveyard, except itself, and special summon it in defense position. These two can summon each other in order to make rank 4s. That's how you can get into your Utopia and your Castell, the Sky Blaster Musketeer. And, of course, you could equip either one of those with Soul Piercer, and then when you Ixie summon with it, this will go to the graveyard to activate its effect. Probably more importantly, if you go from Magnet into Scales, and then use Scales to get either of your Tuners out of the graveyard, you've then got 10 stars that you can make Susanoa. You can also use Scales to get Battle Ball out of the graveyard, and then use its effect. Likewise, because all these equip cards have the effect that you can equip them from your hand or your side of the field, you can actually use this to get your Soul Peacemaker or your Soul Horns out of the graveyard to either summon something, or boost one of your monsters to be able to attack twice. And that just brings us to the extra deck. Susanoa, as I mentioned, has the highest attack with 3,800. Um, in addition to that, once per turn during either player's turns, if you have no spell trap cards in your graveyard, you could target a spell trap in your opponent's graveyard and set it to your side of the field, but banish it when it leaves the field. So not only are you going to be able to set their cards and use them, but you can also use this to steal cards that they would be able to use from the graveyard. Uh, keeping them from getting it. And even if they twin twister it or something like that, then it just gets banished. So they're, they're, you're basically denying them any use or any recycling out of it. This QB, meanwhile, the, the level 9, very rarely make it. Its only effect is uh, while you have no spell traps in the graveyard, it gains 900 defense for every special summoned monster your opponent controls, which will bring it up to 3,400 if they have one monster. Could get even more if they have if they have more monsters on the field, obviously. Uh, Saratobi, meanwhile, during either player's turn, you if you have no spell traps in your graveyard, you could target a spell trap on the field, destroy it, and inflict 500 damage. I play two of these just because a True King's a thing right now, and they've got a lot of level 6s, and being able to pop their spell traps, especially Diagram, pretty useful. Stel Stealth Ninja, meanwhile, you can have this monster's defense uh, till the end phase of the turn to attack directly, so you can use it to go for game in, in clutch situations. In addition, if it's destroyed by a card effect during the next standby phase, you could special summon it out of the graveyard. So it continually comes back, and of course you can use that to go into your QB if you need be. Finally, the second most important one, Shootin' Doji. If this card is Synchro Summoned and you have no spell traps in your graveyard, destroy all spell traps your opponent controls. Really good against decks that require spell traps like Dark Magicians or even your uh, Paleozoic matchup and stuff like that. That's why I have another one on the side deck. This was really good to put in if you're going against a more spell trap heavy deck. Pendulums too it works against. And you can summon this pretty easily because we've got several level 4 monsters. You can normal summon any of these and then just special summon Trumpeter to make it. You can use Battle Ball with any level 4 monster your opponent controls and then blow up all their spell traps. And of course if you Synchro Summon with Soul Piercer you get to search something. Only has 2500 defense which is not a lot but even then you can always use it as a stepping stone next turn with either one of these. The rest of your monsters Monsters here are kind of a toolbox. They rarely come up since so many of your, your monsters have effects that limit you to super heavy samurai monsters. But just in case, they are pretty good to go into. Black Rose Dragon to destroy the field. 
Moonlight Dragon to send things back, Coral Dragon for that uh, destruction of things, and Mistbird Clausalus. This is actually pretty decent because Soul Horns has this additional effect I forgot to mention, that if it's equipped to a monster, you can special summon it. So even if you have just this and then either your Trumpeter or your Battle Ball, you can normal summon them, equip this, then special summon it, and you've got a level 3 Synchro monster. Colossalus in particular is good because it can lower a monster's attack to zero, which can let you OTK even harder if you've got your Soul Buster Gauntlet or another copy of Soul Horns or something like that. Really though, you could replace these with whatever you want if you want to play more Super Heavy Samurai, or just really, I mean you can make Goyo Guardian because these are almost all Earth monsters except for Battle Ball, you can make Clear Wing Synchro Dragon. Um, likewise, I think I played Slacker Magician in here, just because if you get Soul Horns and another one of your level 1 monsters like Soul Buster or Soul Peacemaker, uh, you can, in clutch, just attach that, summon it, and then make a rank 1 to stall. But really, just whatever you feel like. Uh, the side deck, I included some spell traps, namely Galaxy Cyclone and Skill Prisoner. These are pretty good if you're playing a lot of, like, really hell heavy spell trap decks with a lot of counter traps that'll stop you from summoning your shooting doji. This can be good, especially because you can banish it from the graveyard to destroy a face-up spell trap, so then you won't have spell traps in your graveyard. Same thing with Skill Prisoner. Uh, a lot of your monsters lack uh, defensive capabilities, aside from their sturdy defense. I mean, they, they lack defense from being targeted by effects. So Skill Prisoner can be really useful, and again, you can banish it from your graveyard to use it again which will help you keep your effects going. In addition, you can play a lot of hand traps with this deck. Ash Blossom, in particular, a lot of people recommended to me. Uh, I didn't particularly like it because the level 3 tuner doesn't really work as well with everything else. Plus, I wanted to kind of make this a little bit of a budget deck, so I didn't want to include a, a card that's currently sitting up around like $60 to $80. And finally, Soul Shield Wall. This is one I included last time. You could equip it from your hand or your side of the field to a Super Heavy Samurai, and it gains 1,200 defense, which is the biggest defense boost that you can get from any of the Super Heavy Samurais at least as an equip card. If you're running into something where you're going to have trouble with the 3500, this can be really good because it's going to put Big Ben K up to 4700, and nothing's really going to stop against that. Uh, especially if you wanted to do more of an OTK variant as well, you could put this in just to boost your things even further. So there you go, Super Heavy Samurai. It was fun trying them out again. I wasn't really planning to, but I did it just on a whim to try the Synchro variant, and it worked surprisingly well. As always, the full episode with the 10 duels is linked in the description if you want to watch that. Next week, no idea what I'm doing yet. Maybe dinosaurs. We'll see. Until then, good luck and have fun.